everyone and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, after a meeting Friday morning in the SSISD admin building concerning possible steps to take regarding the potential threat of coronavirus, Superintendent Mike Lamb announced that spring break will be extended another week through next week. He also said all district extracurricular activities would be suspended beginning Monday until further notice. No cases of coronavirus have been reported in Sulphur Springs or Hopkins County. Students, faculty, and staff are expected to be able to return to classrooms on Monday, March 23rd. And Texas A&M University Commerce Thursday afternoon made the decision to suspend all face-to-face -face classes and transition to online instruction effective immediately and indefinitely. Krista's Mother Frances Hospital in Sulphur Springs has a birthing center offering some new options to moms. Let's meet Hannah Booth and Christy Couch. I'm Christy Couch. I work at the hospital in the nursery, and I'm also a lactation consultant there. So I help with breastfeeding needs and um, moms who are having trouble with um, getting their baby to breastfeed. And I also teach a breastfeeding class at the hospital once a month. And we also have a breastfeeding support group with the hospital. It's called Breastfeeding is Best Support. We have a Facebook page that we keep up with, and then we also uh, meet once a month, the third Friday of every month. Okay, so these are uh, more support for our birthing center and the uh, facility we have for, for women to have their babies. Yes, ma'am. And Hannah, would you introduce yourself? I'm Hannah Boone, and I work in the labor and delivery unit of the hospital. Okay. And Deb Logan was not able to be here today. She was not. Right. She is our certified nurse midwife that works at the hospital and delivers babies there at the hospital. And she's in the same office with Dr. Fielder and Dr. Dowdy. Okay. And so she had a case this morning. She, she did. did. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's interesting and exciting to know about our birthing center at our Christus Mother Francis Hospital. And so... It's a science that isn't new, but yet there are new things. Yes, Hannah, you want to talk about our new option? Yes, so one of our new options for pain management that we are offering at Christus is nitrous oxide, and it is like laughing gas that you would get at a dentist office, but not as strong. Uh, but it's very helpful, helpful for moms who don't want an epidural and still kind of want to be able to move around, and it can be used all throughout different parts of labor so if you're too early to get an epidural it's a good option to try okay. and if you're too late for an epidural you can also use that then and then for postpartum if you have a tear and you didn't have an epidural it's good for that as well and okay. if you get to the hospital and you kind of have some anxiety about IV placement you can use it then as well so it's a short term I help um, pain medication. It is. It's uh, fast onset and quick to clear the system. Okay. That's a wonderful addition. So nitrous oxide and not everybody has this in their birthing centers. No. We're one of the few hospitals around the area who offers it. So that is a plus. Okay. I think that's a, a real good thing for moms to know around here who might be wanting to do their birth a little more natural. Yes. But they're maybe afraid. They don't know what options there are. Yes, and it is safer as well for the baby. Um, I know a lot of moms come in who don't want an epidural, but sometimes they want an IV pain medication, uh, but it's safer than IV pain medication for the baby. Okay, good to know. It seems as if our hospital really offers several options for mothers. I mean, if like there's uh, completely assisted birth where you don't really know, you know, you're not aware of the whole procedure to doing it all natural and everything in between, uh, That those are the areas that Christus really is helping with more and more. Yes, and nitrous is patient controlled, so the mom has to hold it on her face so she feels like she has more control of her labor and her pain, med uh, pain management during that time. Okay. And also to follow the moms after they have delivered and gone home, helping them with breastfeeding. 
Yes, we hard. do. We offer outpatient help. So once mom goes home, if she's struggling with getting her baby to latch or has more questions about milk supply, anything that has to do with breastfeeding, uh, maybe going back to work and how to begin getting into the routine of pumping, um, then we'll be glad to help them. We can meet up with them at any time. They just call the hospital and make an appointment. And we are happy to meet up with them and help them to meet their breastfeeding goals. So might this be, if it was not a delivery in our hospital, that they can still get in touch? And that is an option. Okay. We do offer that. Okay. That's really good to know. Well, Chris's Mother Francis Hospital in Sulphur Springs does has really been amazing and continues to be so. New things added, new areas uh, focused on, and so our childbirth center is one of those yes and we're also offering um brand new we are offering in combination with the breastfeeding class that we have offered the last few years once a month we also are offering a childbirth portion okay. and that portion talks about you know what to expect when you come in to have your baby it talks about the different options that we've already discussed as far as pain management kind of uh, just letting moms know what they can expect and answering their questions so that they won't be you know, so anxious upon coming in to have their baby and that the childbirth portion is taught by deb logan our certified nurse midwife that we already talked about okay. She has been here quite some, a few years, is that right? Yes, I think around eight years now. Okay, good, and good addition. Christy, what about your history? How did you begin with, this, with local health care? Well, I went to nursing school about 10 years ago, and in nursing school, doing the clinicals, I felt like I really wanted to be in labor and delivery, and then there was an opening in nursery, and so I took that position, and that's actually where I've been for about the last 10 years. And then I just fell in love with helping moms to breastfeed. Um, I like that challenge because some babies are very challenging. And so I enjoy that and I enjoy teaching moms. So there's a lot of teaching that goes on when you're helping moms with their babies. And so I fell in love with that area and just went on to pursue the certification for lactation consultant. Okay. If I remember right, you come from a little bit of an ag background. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I'm still living in that as well. Okay, yeah. Um, you, um, I was going to ask you about your, your training along the way. You kind of had the idea that you wanted to be in this field. And you were assisted to get a start. Uh, and your right. mother also works at our hospital. Right. The hospital... Um, and this was before Christus um, you know, took over the hospital, or before Christus came about. But they offered a an in-house program to teach people and their own people, uh, their own employees, okay. and to send them through nursing school. And then you had to sign a contract to work for them for a couple of years. And so I did that and stayed on, loved them, and they've been a great organization to work with. Good. Well, we you're a true asset to to our. Uh, hospital here and I want to ask Hannah because this is the first time that we have met yes um kind of how you came to be in the in the job that you're in so since childhood I've always known that I wanted to do labor and delivery uh so I went to nursing school knowing that that's what I wanted to do once I got out I loved my clinicals and labor and delivery in the NICU and so once I got out of nursing school they didn't have a position open yet here when I moved back and so once there was a position open I applied and I got it and I've been there for two years and I absolutely love it uh, being able to help moms is so rewarding uh, so it's just an adventure every single day bringing new life into the world <laughs> and you are from the Winsboro area yes I am so I went to tech for nursing or Texas Tech for nursing school and then moved back here to Winsboro or yeah moved back to Winsboro and then applied in Sulphur Springs. Okay. You also are a great asset that we have here. Thank and you. Deb Logan, I'm not sure where she is from, but she is definitely, it seems like when Deb came, it was maybe the first time we had a midwife uh, as an option for moms locally. Right. As long as I, as long as I've worked here, as long as I can remember, I don't ever remember having a midwife. So I think it's a great option for, um, People who don't, you know, necessarily, they want to, midwives just offer 
um, pregnancy and birth in a different way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very valuable. Um, I'd like to ask just anything else that you would like to say about the hospital where you work or the, the field that you're in or the ways that you feel like you have helped people. I wanted to add on to our talk about the breastfeeding and childbirth class. We are now also offering a remote option. And to sign up for that, um, the class is offered once a month. And the breastfeeding and childbirth is on the same day currently. And all they need to do is just call the hospital and ask to be connected to the nursery. And we have a sign-up uh, book in there, and we will contact them. Okay. Very good to know. And the hospital recently just started adding a celebratory meal from Corner Grub House. So the moms get that the next day after they deliver. I've noticed that a lot of moms enjoy that. It's nice to get a good meal after you have a baby. <laughs> After all that, you're really hungry. Yes. <laughs> that is a good, uh, a good addition. Well, we have just a little time, so if there's anything else that you'd like to say, I know you both must get right back over there because you're always needed, <laughs> but uh, anything else about Christus or, or your jobs? or Okay. Can't think of anything. I think you've done a great job covering everything yes. this morning. Thank you. We do have a, a wonderful childbirth center here in uh, Sulphur Springs, and the breastfeeding and childbirth classes being added, or the new childbirth classes. We've been having the breastfeeding class for some time. Right. Which has helped a lot of moms. Thank yes. you both for coming in today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. In sports, the Wildcats baseball team played two very different types of games Thursday at the Reich Builders Classic in Hallsville. The Wildcats uh, collected 13 hits and a 10 to 2 win over Brownsboro and then managed only five hits over nine innings in a 0 0 tie with Lovejoy. Against uh, Brownsboro in the uh, early game, the Wildcats broke a scoreless tie in the top of the second inning by exploding for seven runs. Alex Medina opened the inning by getting hit by a pitch. Hayden Hurst singled. Then with one out, Jared Ratliff got on on an error that scored Medina. Jaden Janway walked to load the bases. And uh, Jake Davis got an RBI by getting a bases loaded walk. Colton Hale drove home two runs with a single, and Jackson Chaney hit a triple that scored two more runs. Will Sims singled to drive in a run, and the Wildcats upped their lead to eight to nothing with a run in the top of the third. Janway doubled and scored on a Davis single. Brownsboro scored their two runs in the bottom of the fifth to make it 8-2, to two, and two Wildcat errors aided their cause. Wildcats added uh, two more runs in the top of the sixth. Hale and Shaney singled, and they moved up a base on a wild pitch. Sims scored one run with a sacrifice fly, and Medina drove home the second run with a single. Hayden Hurst pitched very well in the, the first game for the Wildcats, going five innings, allowing only four hits and two runs with only one earned. Hurst struck out two and walked none. And Aiden Walker pitched a scoreless sixth, retiring all three batters that he faced. The second game of the day against Lovejoy was a pitcher's duel. Sims was spectacular, going nine innings, throwing only 99 pitches and allowing only two hits and no runs with six strikeouts and no walks. And that wasn't good enough to get a win, as the Wildcats also never crossed home plate. They only had five hits. In the first four innings, the Wildcats only got one hit per inning, a Cheney double in the first, a Jace Evans single in the second, a Cheney single in the third, and an Austin Krause double in the fourth. That was it until Krause's single in the ninth. In Lovejoy's eighth inning and the Wildcats' eighth and ninth innings, uh, despite threatening the base hit the teams needed, did not happen. The Wildcats uh, played mostly solid defense against Brownsboro. Janway had a nice catch in left field, and Sims had an exceptional play at shortstop, diving to his left and throwing out a runner at first base. 
Against Lovejoy, third baseman Aiken Owens made a couple of dazzling plays. Uh, one of them hit to his right, requiring that long throw to first base. Shortstop Brendan Lynn also handled quite a few chances flawlessly. The Wildcats' season record is now 9-3-2. In Hallsville changed the Wildcat schedule to give them Friday off so that they could attend the funeral of Wildcat freshman baseball player Sam Copel, who passed away in a four-wheeler accident earlier this week. The Wildcats are scheduled to play Hallsville at noon Saturday and Marshall at 2 p.m. Saturday in that Hallsville tournament, weather permitting. What an offensive night for the Lady Cats softball team as they pounded out 13 hits, got 13 walks, and scored 20 runs in a 20-6 victory over McKinney North on the road Thursday night. The Lady Cats were red hot from the start, scoring nine first-inning runs. They added six more in the second inning. The Lady Cats had two more runs in the third, a single run in the fourth, and two more runs in the fifth. The game was called after five innings. Offensive stars for the Lady Cats were numerous. Uh, Kate Womack was two for three with two runs scored, four RBIs, a double, and two walks. Allie Fight was two for four with two runs, four RBIs, and a double. Nyla Lindley hit a home run and was two for three with two runs, two RBIs, and two walks. Addison Cadell was two for four with a run scored, an RBI, and a walk. Paris Pickett was two for three with uh, three runs scored and a walk. Jaden Harper was one for three with two runs scored, an RBI, a walk, and a stolen base. And Cole Bria Harrison was one for two with three runs scored, two RBIs, three walks, and a stolen base. Addison DeSmet was one for two with two runs scored, an RBI, a walk, and a double. Braley Brewer scored three runs and had two RBIs and a walk. Heather Bowen drew a walk, and Paige Seagraves had an RBI. Denver Wyatt uh, got the uh, pitching win for the Lady Cats, going three innings, giving up four hits and four runs, with only uh, two of those runs earned, and she had a strikeout in two walks. And Allie Fight went the uh, final two innings, allowing four hits and two runs with a strikeout. The Lady Cats even their season record to 9-9, nine and nine, and the Lady Cats' scheduled home game against Wiley East Friday evening was canceled. North Hopkins Panthers baseball team split two games in a Lindsay tournament Thursday. Panthers defeated Collinsville 8-3 and then lost to Blue Ridge 7-4. Against Collinsville, the Panthers fell behind 2-0 in the bottom of the first, then scored eight unanswered runs in an 8-3 win. North Hopkins out hit Collinsville 10-1. Kevin Clement was solid on the mound, going four and a third innings for North Hopkins, allowing only one hit and three runs, only one of which was earned. Uh, Clement struck out 11 and walked seven. Bryson Gillespie finished up the game pitching and retired the uh, few batters that he faced. The Panthers got big hitting games from Gillespie, who was three for four, two runs scored, two RBIs, and a double. Carson Jenkins was two for four with two runs scored and two RBIs. Clement was two for two with a run scored and an RBI. The Panthers swiped 14 bases and uh, Jesse Rivera stole four. In the uh, second game, the uh, Panthers were tied with Blue Ridge uh, four to four after two innings, but Blue Ridge scored the game's final three runs to take a seven to four win. Blue Ridge out hit the Panthers seven to two. North Hopkins had three errors and Blue Ridge had two. For North Hopkins, uh, Rivera was one for three with an RBI. Gavin Buccieri was one for two with a run scored and an RBI. Gillespie also had an RBI. Uh, Gillespie got the uh, pitching loss going two innings, allowing four hits and five runs with only one run earned. Gillespie struck out three and walked three. Easton Lewis went the final two and one-third innings, allowing three hits and two unearned runs while striking out two and walking two. 
and the Panthers were rained out Friday in that Lindsay tournament. And that's Channel 18 News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for joining me, and so long, everybody.